Our output is important, as you mentioned, and Michael Swan promotes 25% of a grammar lesson on input and 75% on output. Now, do you follow this formula? What, what do your presentations look like now? Um, absolutely. I would say they absolutely. The, the explanation or the present, the explanation is very short if I'm going to make an explanation, but really the presentation part is about 25% and then I want them to do lots and lots of practice. But what a presentation for me looks like is, is now very different. Um, often it's coming from a context. So perhaps in the class before we read some, we read an article or we did a listening exercise and I've over the course I've been taking notes on where my students are struggling. And so maybe I've got a list of, of grammar things that I'd like to cover during the course. Well, I can go back to the text and find examples from that listening or from that reading, bring those to class, and have the students go through the text and find those. See how they're being used in the real context. And then from there, the students can work in small groups. They can help each other form the rules. They can do things like mini presentations. They can do jigsaws. They can create posters about those grammar patterns. But it's them that's doing the thinking. It's not me doing the thinking for them. Mm -hmm. Do you always have time to prepare such lessons? No, absolutely not. And sometimes for, for like a quicker intervention, maybe this is something I noticed in the class before and now mm -hmm. the next day I'm responding um, I can I can easily put together worksheets that um, are made up of actual student language that I've pulled from their writing, or I often am taking notes while they're speaking. Or, if I don't have that, I can create examples using the students' names and then details from their lives that I've learned over the term. So if the students go in and see see this bit of work with their name with actual details, it can be it's very you know, it touches them, right? Yes. They're, so they're, they're absolutely engaged in that work. It doesn't take a lot to make a grammar presentation, you know, exciting for the students. Yeah, and this is especially important when you work with beginners, to use students, students', students lives, and prepare examples, contextual examples, right? Yes, absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely. So in your opinion, what are the characteristics of a good grammar presentation? So for me, it's number one is this context, this idea of the grammar is coming from something. I'm not just pulling it out of the thin air because the course book tells me to. Yeah. Um, I want this. I want to give the students something to look at. So yes, I'm using the whiteboard, but I'm using the whiteboard in a disciplined way. I'm showing what the form is. I'm underlining key components. I'm using colors. I'm making diagrams, making timelines for those visual learners to have something to capture, to conceptualize that grammar and in a way that's not just me talking because so many words are just lost. Um, I want to make sure to get to the form and the meaning and the use of a grammatical point. And it'll depend on the students where their learning is on a grammar point, which ones will be the focus. Um, some students may have the form completely down for a grammar pattern, but they're having problems with the meaning or they maybe their, their form is perfect, but they don't know how to use it quite correctly. Things like that. Next, I don't tell the whole truth anymore. I really limit my explanations to, to the core of that grammar point that the students need to communicate more accurately. Yeah, and I, I've, I've now cut off the fat and I don't do these long, obscure facts about that thing because it's not useful and it gets messy in their heads. Um, and finally, I engage the students in the explanation. Um, I make sure that they're the ones doing the work, not me. Because if they're doing the work, it's going to be a cognitively deeper experience for them. Thank you very much. Thank you for your time.